Russian President Vladimir Putin says Monday's strikes on Ukraine come in response to its terrorist action following the attack on the strategic Kirsch Bridge. Thousands of people take to shelters as the Ukrainian president says they're dealing with terrorists as Russian missiles hit many Ukrainian cities. Danish authorities say that power is back on after the island of Bornholm experienced a complete blackout Monday morning. The president of the European Parliament has condemned the recent escalation of strikes against Ukraine, calling it a war crime. Russian President Vladimir Putin has cleared any doubts about who is responsible for the long-range missile strikes across several Ukrainian cities this Monday. This was Moscow's response to Saturday's attack on the key Kirsch Bridge. In a televised speech with the National Security Council, Putin said the attack was an act of terrorism. The Kyiv regime, by its actions, has actually put itself on the same level as international terrorist formations with the most odious groups. To leave crimes of this kind unanswered is simply impossible. This morning, at the suggestion of the Ministry of Defense and according to the general staff of Russia's plan, a massive strike was carried out with precision weapons, long-range air, sea and land-based facilities, at energy, military command and communications in Ukraine. If terrorist attacks continue on our territory, responses from Russia will be harsh. Putin added that the scale of Moscow's response will correspond to the level of threats posed by the Russian Federation. The Kirsch Bridge is a high symbolic and strategic value for the Kremlin as it links the angst Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea with mainland Russia. Patriotic chants in the bowels of Kyiv to ward off the fear of Russian bombardment, while thousands of people took refuge in the subway and some children sang the national anthem, the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, addressed the nation with gravity on his face. He says the morning is difficult. We're dealing with terrorists, dozens of missiles, Iranian shahids. They have two targets, energy facilities throughout the country. They want panic and chaos. They want to destroy our energy system. They have no chance. The second target is people. Such a time and such targets were specially chosen to cause as much damage as possible. Always remember, Ukraine was here before this enemy appeared. Ukraine will be here after him. Zelensky has called on the population not to leave shelters on a nightmarish day in which Russia has launched dozens of missiles and suicide drones against various Ukrainian cities. Belarus has ordered its troops to deploy with Russian forces near Ukraine in response to what it perceives as a clear threat of attack from Kiev and its Western allies. On Saturday, Belarus's allies in Moscow blamed Kiev for an explosion on the bridge connecting Russia to the illegally annexed peninsula of Crimea. Now, President Alexander Lukashenko has accused Ukraine of planning attacks on Belarusian territory. Tell the president of Ukraine and other insane people that the Crimean bridge will seem like nothing if they touch just one meter of our territory with their dirty hands. Meanwhile, in neighboring Lithuania, President Gitanas Norseda visited German military personnel stationed in his country. While observing military drills, he said that Moscow's attacks in Kyiv and western Ukraine were signs of desperation amid its bad performance on the front. Russia launched a massive wave of strikes targeting cities across Ukraine in response to an attack on the Kerch Bridge linking Russia and annexed Crimea. Russia's President Vladimir Putin confirmed the strikes on a range of locations in Ukraine this morning, once again blaming Ukraine for the Kerch Bridge attack, describing it as, quote, act of terrorism. Russian missiles and drones struck cities across Ukraine, including Kharkiv, Krivirich, Lviv, Dnipro, Ternopil, Kremenchuk, Khmelnytsky and Zhytomyr. Starting around morning rush hour, a dozen explosions were heard in Kyiv, many of which struck the very center of the nation's capital. These attacks are the first missile strikes in Kyiv since the 26th of June. 
Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shmuhal said 11 infrastructure facilities in eight regions and in the capital, Kyiv, had been damaged in the Russian strikes. According to Valery Zaluzhny, commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, as of 11 a.m., 75 missiles were fired by Russia at Ukraine, of which only 41 were shot down by air defense. This morning's strikes come amid pressure on Russian forces in northeastern and southern regions, according to the latest update by the UK Defence Ministry. Moscow has been giving high priority to its operations near the eastern town of Bakhmut. That's here. The UK adds, saying the Kremlin's troops have advanced around two kilometres towards the town on two axes over the past week. Russia's continued efforts to progress its grinding Donbass offensive in the face of serious threats on its operational flanks highlights the imperative to deliver operational success while also underlining the inflexible operational design which has undermined its plans thus far. This morning was the hardest for Ukrainians since the end of February when the Russian aggression uh, began here uh, with uh, critical civilian infrastructure and civilians hit. Of course, there is some sense of fear, but mostly there is a, uh, feel this feeling of anger against these senseless attacks. People took uh, uh, this threat seriously. All the metro stations in Kiev, where I'm standing right now, uh, worked uh, as underground shelters and uh, they were full this morning. Uh, right now people start leaving them with uh, their covers. Uh, they were sitting on with their children, with their dogs. Uh, also there were some reports about uh, power cuts in uh, the capital and um, as well uh, as in Lviv, which was uh, in, the, in the western Ukraine, which was one of the many cities and towns hit today in Ukraine. There are some reports about uh, power cuts and water supply cuts. Uh, around me, I don't feel uh, panic. I would say that people are rather thinking forward how to deal with this threat, how to make sure them uh, selves and their families are safe. The Danish Baltic Sea Island of Bornholm experienced a complete blackout Monday morning. Authorities say an underwater cable that provides electricity from Sweden is now back online. The island is located halfway between Denmark and Sweden and is very close to where the Nord Stream gas pipelines lay. The Russian-built natural gas pipeline suffered from blasts two weeks ago, causing leaks. The island of Bornholm is an important naval base and hosts sophisticated NATO radar, which listens to any approaching Russian aircraft. It's also home to nearly 40,000 people. Both the West and Russia blame each other for the damage to the Nord Stream pipelines. Since then, Denmark has increased security around its energy infrastructure. The European Union has responded with outrage to a new wave of strikes on Ukrainian cities, marking an escalation in fighting that hasn't been seen for months. That what is happening is sickening, this indiscriminate attack on children, uh, people going by their daily lives, going to school, um, uh, civilians being killed is absolutely reprehensible. Uh, for me, uh, I will repeat what I've always said, appeasement has never worked and appeasement will never work. These are war crimes and the response has to be proportionate. She also stressed that the bloc should continue to support Ukraine. Well, Ukraine must win this war and we must do everything to make sure that Ukraine wins the war. We must respond to Ukraine's demands. They are fighting for their lives. We have a war in Europe. We cannot let the Kremlin get away with it. At least 11 people have died and another 64 people were injured in the recent attacks. The spokesperson for the European Commission, Peter Stano, also claimed that the strikes amount to a war crime. And the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has backed the creation of an international tribunal to investigate possible war crimes committed in Ukraine. NATO Security General Jens Stoltenberg has also condemned the attacks on civilian infrastructure and stated that the alliance will continue to support Kyiv for as long as necessary.